So, Michelle, I once heard a friend, a good friend of mine say this. He said, marry their girlfriends. Women marry their future husbands. Now, what this means is that the guy that, the girl that a guy proposes to is already the person he wants to be married to. But the guy that a girl marries isn't that guy quite yet. But with some molding and some training, he can become the guy she wants to be married to. Is that a fair analogy? I, I would say that's pretty fair. <laughs> that's pretty, I mean, Travis did have most of it, though. I would say so Travis, he had potential. Yeah, I don't have to. I didn't have to do a lot of molding or, you know, training. Um, he, I would say that he. I knew that he was someone I would. I would want to marry because. We talked about before, like our love languages and stuff like that. And mine is what's it called? What is it? I don't say yeah. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Okay, never mind. I'm yeah. sorry. We're gonna get there because that's okay. that's that's very important. Sorry. By the way, I do want to get there. No, no, you're fine. Okay. I think one of the key things that you mentioned that resonated with, with me, and I'm sure will resonate with a lot of my audience. And instantly, my audience is between the ages of 35 and 55, so they're all adults. Most of who probably. Are either married or divorced or separated or going through this going to second marriage. The one thing I think that impressed me about what you said, um, Michelle, is that after your your marriage, you did some reflection, and it's one of the hardest things to do is to look at yourself in a critical light and and not say, you know, that maybe I had some hand in the end of my marriage. Now, to your point, you know, you don't do anything that justifies the other person going out and, and cheating. But at the end of the day, when you take that part of it out, even before that happened, the marriage is already, already on the rocks, right? So right. Both, par both people had a hand in that. And one of the hardest things to do is to accept your own hand in that, right? And you know, look, I had to go through that as well. But I think that's part of the, the first step to making the next relationship work or even the existing relationship to say, you know what? I'm gonna eat some. I'm gonna have to eat some crow here. Uh, I have to swallow a bunch of pride. Uh, but if I want this to get better or the next one to be better, I've got to put my hand up and say, you know what? Yeah, I, I've been dropping the ball a little bit, and there's stuff I need to work on. And you know, to your point, one of those things is communication, right? If you don't talk, the other person can't know what you're thinking. And I know a lot of guys <laughs> say. We can't read your mind. Now, I just met the two of you tonight. I can say to you, I can't read your mind. And I'm pretty sure, uh, looking at your reaction, Travis, that might have been said once or twice. Is that fair to say? That's fair, yes. I think I said it last night. <laughs> or no, I think I said, I need you to just read my mind. Yes. Last night. Yes. And guys, don't come with the mind reading gene. They, that got left out. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yes, okay. All Real right, sick. so we're itching to get into this next topic. So, Travis, I'll start with you and, and uh, Michelle, jump in as well. Okay, so you mentioned the five love languages. Now, I know some of the viewers will have heard of that. Some will have no idea what that is. So what are the five love languages? How does it work? And how did it help you to break through the invisible wall of awkwardness that happens when you try to revive a sex life on life support. Now, again, maybe in your scenario, it's not quite that way, but if you're starting up a new relationship and realize, you know what, there's certain things I wanted to, I wanted in the last marriage. I didn't know how to ask for it. It got to a point where it was just too awkward to bring up the conversation because we were like roommates. Uh, right. So what are the five love languages and how I want to hear from both of you uh, individually. How did you use the love language? What we did was we we did talk about that early on before before we even got married. And um, the you're going to have to correct. You're going to have to fill in one. But um, for those of you, if you haven't heard of the five love languages, I highly recommend you read the book. They've got an audio book, worksheet. They've even got an online test um, that you can you can take it. But it, it basically lets you know how your partner, the language they use and receive communication and how they um, how they react, I guess. So, for example, um, so there's acts of service where, you know, you like someone to, to do things for you or show them that, you know, you're 
doing things for them. There's gifts is one, which is, you know, and it's not necessarily presents or always buying you stuff. It's just maybe the thoughtfulness of a gift. Um, there is um, words of affirmation, physical touch. And I'm going to, I've always forgot the last one. Do you know it? by Quality chance? time. There you go. Quality, Quality time. time. Okay. So, you know, you take that test and then it lets your partner get a really good insight on, um, you know, how you react to things. So my, I had actually a tie for, I had two number ones. The same score on both was physical touch and words of affirmation. And it's interesting because I think a lot of guys, maybe it's not their top, but I think words of affirmation matter to a lot of guys. You know, we're, we're just kind of beings that we want to hear, hey, good job, or, you know, thank you for doing this, things like that. It happens so rarely for guys that when we do hear it, it's like, wait, did they just say that? Right, right. Acts, service. Acts of service and physical touch. Sorry, I couldn't pick up your voice, but I was... Okay. That was right. Yes, acts of service. Okay, so let's let's go down your list from in order of the five. And before you go that go through that, let me make sure people understand. So I think what Travis is saying and the way the five love languages work is that the way that uh, people express their affection for somebody um, right. is in five different different ways. Uh, and oftentimes people express affection uh, in a way to certain people that would be the way that they would want to receive it. So, for example, acts of service. I may go out and mow the lawn uh, for you because I like acts of service that makes me feel like I'm appreciated. But the other person is like, okay, well, you mow the lawn. They may not they may not receive it that way. And although you're doing all this extra stuff thinking, hey, they're going to appreciate what I'm doing, they're not, they don't interpret an act of service as a way of showing affection. They would rather more quality time or they'd rather um, physical touch. So the way I understand it is that we don't always interpret affection in the same way that we show it. Right. So, right. Michelle, what you were saying was that uh, physical touch and acts of, service. acts of service. So when, you know, when Travis puts his arms around you and he says, hey, honey, let me go take your car to the car wash for you. To you, that has a real impact. You feel like he really cares about me. Is that a fair way of saying it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So he does the, just the little things for me. Um, cooking dinner or doing the dishes at night that is a huge, I don't know what the word is, but that is, means everything to me. Way more than if he went out and bought me a present or something like that. She came home tonight and dinner was ready on the table right when she walked in. <laughs> Now, question for you. What if he does uh, one of those frozen dinners? That's still okay because I'm easy to please and I hate to cook. <laughs> so as long as there's food, I'll eat it. It could be chocolate well and I'm fine. <laughs> Guys, are you paying attention to this? Listen very carefully to what she just said. It doesn't have to be a seven-course meal at a five-star restaurant. The fact that you did it is what matters. Is that a fair fair statement? Yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. So now your so it was it was a physical touch, acts of service, uh, and this is always in order of priority. So those are the top two. And what are the last three in order of priority? Do you remember what they were? What was least important? Was it gifts? Gifts were my least important. Gifts. Do you remember your least important? I think that words and affirmation are my least important. Really? Yes. That's it. Least important? I believe so. They were all pretty close, I, I, you know, points within a few points of each other. So it wasn't like zero and the best for 20, but it was the least important. But Travis will tell you I'm terrible at taking compliments, so that's probably part of it. Yeah, could be. And the natural instinct for a guy is to lavish you with compliments. So it must have been frustrating when you were dating before you met Travis when a guy would lavish you with compliments and you're like. <sighs> pretty much, yes. I still make that face at him. He's, you look so pretty. I'm like, whatever. 
You have Whatever. to say that we're married. <laughs> now go make some dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Travis, let's hear your five love languages in order of priority, the most important to the it least a, important. It was literally a tie for physical touch and acts of service. Last was gifts, and then the other two were a tie for a second. So it's interesting how it scores. Um, so gifts was my bottom, bottom one. You know, I, I did a test a few times, and every time I do it, it comes out the same. Uh, and it was... Physical touch and quality time were the top for me. And at the very bottom was gifts. You know, I, I mean, gift is nice, and I appreciate when somebody puts a lot of thought into it. The challenge I run into is when someone's put a lot of thought into a gift, and you can tell they have because it was custom built for you, and they hand it to you, and you're like, thanks. Like, you, you know that they're looking for a reaction from you. Right. And that, I guess what they're saying to you is that's the way that I view affection is when somebody goes out of their way to do something special just for me in this giving gifts. And I was never a gift guy. I mean, I, I don't give great gifts. I'll be honest. I, it takes a lot. I have to ask people for advice. I'm not good at that. Uh, and I, I don't want for much. I mean, I, I'm, I live a simple life. So gifts, they're nice. Yeah. But, all right. So, so anyway, so there's the book, there's the audio book. I will include a link in the low bar, which has the 13 chapters of Gary Chapman's audiobook. Uh, if you want to listen through it, like uh, Travis was saying, there's a, an online link. I'll put the link in the low bar as well. We can actually do the test. And it's interesting because I also, when I did the test, I looked at what my results were and I thought about people I had been in relationships with in the past and I said, now I see why that didn't work out. Right, right. I get it. If you enjoyed the show and want to see more, join our Facebook page called The Man Cave by Gentlemen You Know. All of our shows, tons of additional content, and invitations to future shows are posted there. You can add to the conversation and suggest future discussion topics. Please like, comment, share, and most of all, subscribe by clicking the Gentlemen United icon. I promise it's free. Thanks again for joining us in The Man Cave. Enjoyed the show? Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for joining us in The Man Cave. <laughs>